So hello. Uh, I'm going to read to you what the manual of my laptop right here states. To comply with FCC RF exposure requirements, a separation distance of at least 20 centimeters, that's 8 inches, must be maintained between the wireless antenna and all persons. And in no time at all, I went online and I got pictures from Baltimore and Howard County, speaking to the social media issue here, classrooms of kids with laptops on their laps, lying on the floor with their fa face like this, two inches from the screen. That's where the antennas are. Children are bringing laptops and cell phones into schools as part of a bring your own device policy, and they have no idea that they could be violating U.S. federal radiation limits and certainly are not informed of the FCC instructions in the manual. The manual of my cell phone states to comply with FCC RF exposure requirements, a minimum of 0.79 inches needs to be maintained between the body and the person. Now, one Coward County picture that I found had kids, and they had the cell phone and the laptop on their lap, on the floor, and they were streaming music videos, I know, because that's what the caption said, which is really high radiation coming off with streaming videos or, or music. Children, parents, and staff need to be fully informed by schools that these classroom tools emit radio frequency. They need to know the instructions. They are violating the instructions unknowingly right now. Otherwise, and that exceeds FCC limits, as stated in the manual. And as I understand it, the liability uh, rests not just with the State Department of Education or District Board, but also with each policymaker personally, because you've been informed of these violations and have a duty of care to oversee a safe environment. I'm sure you've seen the mug shots from Flint, Michigan, where state employees are being charged because they did not take action. And I am informing you and have been for the last three years. These outdated FCC regulations, if you were to follow them, don't protect children or pregnant women. Please read the Baby Safe Project brochure I gave you. I've given you this in the past, and also the EMF Scientist link, which I've given you of the 220 scientists calling for action on this issue. In June, the U.S. National Toxicology Program released the results of their $25 million study and found that long-term full-body exposure at low levels significantly increased brain cancer, Schwann cell tumors. They also found DNA damage and increased incidence of right ventricle degeneration in the rats. NIH scientists state this is notable because the same cancers are found in these rats as in humans when they looked at long-term heavy use. Heavy use described, as I discussed earlier, as 30 minutes a day for 10 years. Now, NIH scientist Dr. Melnick, who led the study design, states the study was meant to test the basis for FCC limits that low-level radio frequency could not cause health effects. He states they tested it, and, the, hy and it, um, the hypothesis has now been disproved because of the findings. So I'll, fi I'll finish with, um, he also says, regulatory agencies should make strong recommendations for consumers to take precautionary measures, and I'm asking that the board inform students and parents about FCC instructions so they are not unknowingly absorbing radiation. They have a right to know this information, and that the board ensure the installation of safe technology for our children in classrooms to protect their health and well-being and their future. Thank you. Thank you.